Do you watch Netflix anymore? Probably as much as you watch Fox. Fair. <laughs> Delivering a lump of coal, spray painted gold, Tucker Carlson sat down with Frank Underwood, Kevin Spacey's character who was killed off House of Cards at the beginning of its final season in 2018. Why did this faux interview happen? I don't know. Watch how they report on this conversation. There'll be one or two headlines that get repeated over and over and over. Now, there's not much of note in this seven-minute sketch, um, so you can only get a couple headlines out of it anyways. Now, this is not live. It wasn't timely. They made a Christmas Eve thing, but this could have been you know, posted at any time over the last week. Um, but they decided to post it at 1 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Now, Christmas Eve is one of those days where there's not a lot of newsworthy stuff happening. It's like uh, Thanksgiving and New Year's Day and Easter and like the 4th of July uh, and Canada Day. Like those are all days not a lot happens in the news. So posting today means Tucker and Frank are increasing their odds of getting some tension and coverage for the faux interview. That's all about how they don't need the media. Right, boys? So let's not pretend you're not desperate for attention and... Look, I think they're trying to do their best to stay relevant. Look, platforms like X, I mean, you move information around so quick that everybody else is just playing catch up. Yeah, Twitter employee Tucker posted this on his page. Kevin retweeted it. That was Kevin's first tweet on the platform in three years. Not exactly a ringing endorsement for the platform. Now, Elon, Twitter, funded this video. So they paid Tucker, uh, they paid the cameraman, they paid the editors. I highly suspect you paid Kevin as well. It's got the TCN on X logo in the corner. So then, why did both Tucker and Kevin post this on their individual YouTube pages? Another not so ringing endorsement for Twitter. Here we are, Tucker, bigger than ever. Oh yeah, I think everyone can see that this is two-time Oscar winner Kevin Spacey at the peak of his career. Now, Kevin didn't create Frank Underwood. The House of Cards writers created him. In 2014 on GMA, Kevin said he was clueless about Frank with the writers. I'm not an actor who thinks that, oh, I know this character completely and I show up on the set and I can do it in my sleep. Bo Williman and our team of writers, as they begin to explore more, uh, um, reveal more, I'm learning more about this character and, and so I don't know everything yet. And demonstrating how he's clueless about writers, Let's watch this exchange between Frank and Tucker. That doesn't mean that you're gone though from Netflix. I don't, I don't even know if you're aware of this, but every time a person pulls up the Netflix app, you're there in some way. Have you seen this? Yes, you know what that is. Now, Kevin, the other character in the scene just told you, hey, did you know you're part of the Netflix logo? And then now you're responding to him, hey, did you know I'm part of the Netflix logo? It's really bad writing. Boom, boom. That didn't sound much like the Netflix sound effect. Yeah, because it's not. When Kevin hit the fake Oval Office desk twice in the final shot of season two of House of Cards, you can hear that the sound mixers replaced the less dramatic sound that Kevin made with his fist with the sound effect that the audio engineers created. It was made by Lon Bender and Charlie Campagna. The podcast, 20,000 Hertz, interviewed those two gentlemen a few years ago and got the details of how they created the sound effect that was not created by Kevin Spacey. There are four central components. A wedding ring knocking on wood. A slowed down anvil sound. Muted hits. And finally, the blossom, a reversed phrase from a guitar. I don't know the details of the Kevin Spacey allegations, so my feelings toward him right now of disgust are not about that. I'm in disgust over the fact that he would discredit the writers of House of Cards and stupidly think he could play Frank Underwood without a script and then take away credit from the sound engineers who did him no harm. Do you think within Netflix and the leadership suites that your influence is still felt? Well, according to your research, my influence is felt every time every customer opens the app. I'd say that's pretty powerful. How exactly does an actor who played a character on a show that ended over five years ago still influence the execs at a media company <laughs> who produced hundreds of shows since? They don't think about you, dude. None of us do. I don't think there's any question. Netflix exists because of me. I put them on the map and they tried to put me in the ground. They didn't try, they did. Frank Underwood is dead. I'll tell you this though, Francis. When they bury me, it won't be in my backyard. This was just a walking corpse, not admitting that his career is dead. Thoughts? And Merry Christmas to you too.